All right, this is our third video. Hey, we want to talk about some tips today about repair deadlines. The dun 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 music should come on. Um, so, Amy, you coach a lot of people through repair deadlines. It's probably the number one yeah. hair pulling, stressful thing. So, give us some tips on when they're creating repair deadlines. That's important. Um, so, before you even get down to the meat and potatoes of it, the first thing that I always try and establish is what's important to the buyers and try and put their fears aside so they understand how we ask for things, what we should ask for. But if there's anything that's a deal breaker or anything that absolutely, you know, scares them to death. Like I had a client recently who, you know, he had to have fire extinguisher, I mean fire. Uh, yes because her parents house had burned down in January. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. That's so, but it was, it was, and you know, so I went to the agent and said that. So there are certain things that sometimes we don't understand what's value to people. So understanding yeah. what's really important to them. I, I agree, I think, and don't assume everything on the list they want fits. Sometimes right. they're like, yeah, no big deal. My brother can do this, I can do this later. Um, so just, so you literally go through the list with them, hey, do you want, ask for the fan and you want to ask for the HVAC like you kind of check box what you think their yes and no are. Um, a little bit of that but also depending on how many things there are sometimes I'll say okay well, we have a couple really big heavy hitters so we might want to discount ones that aren't as essential like right. the loose railing sort of thing right. you know. It's 25, 50, 100 bucks. Yeah That's but right. I give them the opportunity to let me know what they want and then we go through it. And then you also talked about, like, we were talking about, it's kind of interesting, the difference between a defect and a cosmetic, because there's some gray areas that say, so what do you feel like is a definition of a defect? So it's, it's a safety hazard, yep. or it's going to cause damage later to, you know, a safety hazard is something not grounded, right, is there an electrical outlet, right. um, there's a junction box open that, that could be, have access to water, um, you know, a, loose board on a deck that's a trip hazard, something that's a safety, could cause harm to the home. It could be mechanical, obviously. It could be, uh, like you said, safety. It, it could be physical, water damage, things like that. But cosmetic, I always, you know, like peeling wallpaper or a little ripple in the carpet, um, a little chip in the sheetrock for no reason because somebody dinged it. Those aren't really typically things that you see on a... No, and, and a lot of times the buyers are not good at discerning that. And it's one of the things where I always encourage agents to interview their inspector and yeah, see their, okay. their inspection reports to see if they sometimes call out things that really aren't defects that you're gonna have a hard time convincing your buyer. Mm -hmm. No, it's not really a defect, we can't ask for it. Yeah. And another thing we were talking about was the preamble, which is that paragraph the, the oh, CYA okay. paragraph, but then when you list uh, you know, all the problems, all the lists would fix this, do this, all that. But why, do you, why is it so important for us to use a preamble? What is that paragraph being represented? So that is actually one of the things that I have coached a lot of agents on because they will just go in and start with, you know, the inspections that happened on such and such day. Well, it doesn't protect anybody. If you're, if you are not paying attention to, first of all, that you're establishing who can do the repairs, mm -hmm. you know. It, License contractor or a handyman. Or right, there. and I even put in there that the seller is not allowed to do the repairs unless it's been predetermined. And the other thing is the need for a reinspection. You know, sometimes we have to do really expensive, scary things, and you want the ability to go back and ask for them. Right, right. And and receipts. And receipts, right, when they're rendered to you before closing, before walkthrough. Because you can also tell if it was a licensed contractor that did it or some random. I mean, if there's a receipt, you can look up DPOR and say, hey, this person, ABC Plumber, is on DPOR's website. Yeah. Yeah. And then last thing, I have another tip, just kind of, um, you were saying like proofing it. What What's your tip on that? So a lot of it is, you know, we deal with all different types of personalities. So whenever I write up the repair addendum, before I actually send it through them in the transaction just to sign, I have them proofread it. Do you like email them a PDF of it? I email them a PDF, which you can do yep. right from Same there. PDF, yep. yep. So that they can look through it and they've read it 
if there's any typos or if there was something that was omitted, then I learned a lot. Yeah, that, me too. <laughs> and it's all done, and you're like, shoot, I forgot that. Right, and because then the onus is not only on you. They, yeah. You know, you read it, you missed it as well. I mean, I did it one time. I left a word out that basically it changed it, it changed it and uh, they caught it while it was still it had been sent over. And I was able to say, oh, wait, we're going to change it before the seller had signed it. But at the same point, yeah, no, I think it's, re I think it's really important. I love that. So recap, important to your buyer, um, and I know what the definition of a, a defect is. Use that preamble, cut and paste. We have it everywhere yep. um, in our documents. And then proof, 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 make sure your client does it. So it's kind of a team sport where you're not just liable. You're kind of getting their um, set eyes on. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys and next episode. Bye.